Our scripture reading will be coming first from the Old Testament, very familiar scripture, one that blesses our very soul. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes
maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Mm -hmm. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <clears throat> the New Testament reading, let not your heart be troubled. And we know that this is found in John 14, very familiar text also in such a time as this, one that will bring comfort to our very soul. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, and prepare a place for me, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not where the God goes, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And this is the word of God. Amen. Let us pray. And we want to make this prayer for all of us, and particularly for the family, particularly for you. Let us pray. Come now, Lord, the God of all comfort. Yes. Lord, we realize at such a time as this, the only comfort that we can give, get that will do us any good, is the comfort of heaven. Yes. So reach down, Lord, and surround this family with your loving arms. Hold them with the love that you told us that you would stick closer than any brother. So right now, they meet me, Lord. Right now, oh God, they're, they're kind of in between. They, they want to see their loved one home with you, but they don't want to miss his physical presence. With that blessed assurance and knowing that they will see him again. And now, Lord, in the days to come, when family and friends are not around and they're left with just memories and absence, missing Brother David. Oh, Lord God, we ask that you would be there, draw them close to you, and surround them with your loving arms, that blessed assurance, and knowing that you're God, that you're too wise to make any mistakes. And your love is so endearing that you would do nothing but blessings. And it's in this spirit we ask, and all in the name of Jesus, whose we are and 
who is the Christ. Amen. Amen.
be a light today. But there is a better day coming. There is a word from the Lord found in the book of Revelation, chapter number 21. Revelation chapter number 21. Say, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride of name for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Yes. And God shall wipe away every tear from their eye. Yes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no cry. There shall be no more pain, for the former things are passed away. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you for a few minutes from this song. The best is yet to come. Yeah. The best is yet to come. Father, we thank you. And Father, we give you honor right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you will breathe on us and come alive within us. Speak to us and through us that your people might be blessed. Yeah. Lord, we're asking you to do what only you can do. Give this family comfort yes. like only you can. Yes. There's nothing I can say or do to do the many good. Yes. But if they can just hear one word from you, yes. Yes. it will make them leave here feeling a little bit better. Yes. Yes. Give them a word that will strengthen them that they may go on from this day forward knowing that the best is yet to come. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. And all of us say, Amen. Amen. If in this life we only believe that good things are granted to us, we're cheating ourselves. Because no matter what we have in this life, it don't compare to eternity with God. The Bible says the eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have they entered into the heart of men. The thing that God has prepared for them who love him. So we shouldn't get so fixed on this life that we forget about that is not only a better day, but the best is still yet to come. To say that the best is yet to come means that no matter what happens now, that I have a future after this. But before we can get to heaven, there's some things that have to happen. <clears throat> Number one, you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. He is the only route to heaven. I don't care what they tell you. Jesus is so high that you can't get over. He's so low that you can't get under. He's so wide that you can't get around. But you got to come in at the door. So if you want to make it into the presence of God for eternity, Jesus is the doorway. He said, I am the door for the sheep. He is the doorway for us to get into the presence but there's something that has to happen before we can see the new heaven and new earth. And John chapter 20, verses 15 through 20, he talks about the great white throne judgment. Because judgment day is coming before heaven is coming. Judgment day is for those who have not accepted Christ. 
Because the Bible talks about a second death. If you accept Christ, you only die once. Amen. But if you don't accept Christ, you die twice. Amen. God will raise you up to judge you to kill you again. The Bible says that when John saw him sitting on the throne, he said that, that, that heaven and earth fled from him. It disappeared because it couldn't stand in the presence of God. John said there was books open and there was a book open. There was books open and there was a book open. The books, the people were judged by what were written in the books. Let me pause right here and tell you, God is keeping records on what we do in this earth. Uh, we can't say we didn't do it because I just told you it's written in the book. God will be able to bring back to your remembrance those things that we done that was not pleasing in his sight. He said that not only, he said the great and the small were judged according to what was written in the book. But he said there was another book, the book of the Lamb, book of life. See, if your name is in the Lamb, book of life, you don't have to worry about what's written in the book. Just make sure your name is written in the Lamb, book of life. See, if your name is written in the Lamb, book of life, there's a better day coming for you. See, when your name is written down in heaven, there's a better day coming for you. I don't care what it looks like, but if God got your name marked on his breath, there's a better day coming. I don't care what you're going through right now, but there's a better day coming for folks who know the Lord Jesus Christ. Because his name, your name is written in the book of life. John said that after all was said and done, he said that those names who were not found in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. Not only were they cast in the but death, hell and the grave were cast in there too. Then he said, we can get excited now because I've seen a new heaven and a new earth. The best is yet to come. This world has nothing to give you that God will not replenish. Because you got to realize the best is yet to come. See, if you really tell the truth, the first man that you really wanted to marry, you thought you had to have, you glad you didn't have him because you got something else. The, the best is yet to come. If you be honest with yourself, it's some stuff that you glad that you didn't get because something better came along because you waited on the The best is yet to come. I don't care what it looks like in this world. The best is yet to come. He said, I've seen a new heaven and a new earth, and there was no more sin. And you have to understand, because the book of Revelation, book of symbols and, and, and figures of, of speeches, when he's talking about sin, he's talking about war. When he's talking about there's no more evil. So you got to realize, see, that's something to shout about right now. When you think about all the evil that go on in the earth, a better day is coming. You got to worry about no more school. There's no more evil. You got to worry about no more pedophiles and rapists. You got to worry about no more evil going on in here. The better day is coming after a while. The old folks say, a better day is coming by and by. It might not look like it now, but there's a better day coming. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. We have new places. We have a new heaven. A new earth, and John said, I saw a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. Looked like a bride walking down the aisle of the earth. If you ever been married, on that day, I don't care how unattractive you might think a woman is. It's something about her being dressed in her wedding garment. Coming down the aisle of Leah Hudson, that's the most beautiful thing that you can see. And John said that the new Jerusalem looked like a bride coming down from heaven prepared for God, from God. The new Jerusalem is the dwelling place of God's people. Not only did God prepare a place for his people, but in verse uh, 2 he talked about his presence being there. Not only do we be gathered together in one place, but God will be there too. And understand that when you're in the presence of the Almighty God, you realize that you're in a good place. When you're in the presence of God, that's a great place to be. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is my strength. When you're in the presence of the Lord, 
But we believe that they can deliver the soul. He knew that the place was yet to come. He knew we had a better place. So we allow our loved ones to receive what God has prepared for them. The best is yet to come. So we have a future to look forward to. We have a life to look forward to. But after this, may God bless you.
Shall not have mercy here, shall I pray. For spare us, Lord most holy, O God most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not in the last hour any pain to death or fall from thee. For as much as it pleased Almighty God to take unto himself our departed brother, who bear his body to the place that was prepared for him. As it may return to ask it, dust to dust, the imperishable spirit, refined as by fire, may forever be with the Lord. I heard a voice from heaven speak unto me, right from his four blessed of the dead, who died in the Lord, even said the spirit for their rest from their labor. Let us repeat the model prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Each other, Father, we come now to say thank you. Lord, ask this family to prepare to leave this place today. Pray that they never leave your presence. Lord, that you will forever be with them. Lord, you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. You will be with us all the way. Now may the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, raise room and about the his for now and forevermore. And let us all say amen. Amen.